Look at your sunburnt arms. Oh, I know. Oh, look at the state of me. Drowned, burnt. <laughs> Welcome to Universal Studios, yay, <laughs> where the weather is always dry. <laughs> We're off to Universal Studios, Harry Potter. It's, it's, it's I know, it's so wet, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We're British, we're used to rain. This is nothing, nothing at all. But yeah, so we're walking to HP Land right now. Well, we're going to ride on our first ride. It's Hogwarts, and in the rain, it looks quite authentic. Yeah, we love this fantastic place. So good. Here we are at Hogwarts. About to go on to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter ride, which we always go on first. It's just brilliant. It really is. So this is like the conservatory outside before you go into the main attraction. Do you know one particular time I remember queuing all the way around here before we got into there and I think you were texting your friend as well to tell her all about this because uh, one of Holly's friends is really into Harry Potter. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Inside the Great Hall. Griffin. Come closer if you like. Do this. This here is the Intended to ensure your safety. We thought you might not watch that quick. Tom, I learned from a world class British player. Come on, thanks. What have you seen? Oh, no. Glasses, hats, and magic wand gloves. An enchanted bent lies on the jacket of that funnel of the tail. In fact, the last time I risked it. Because of my suntan yesterday, I'm positively glowing in the dark. <laughs> There's the sorting hat. So just like last time, <laughs> we're on it. It broke down, and it just broke down again. So we're going to go in again to see if it does break down again. If not, then we'll have a great experience. And this time we'll stop and then it'll be a massive thing hitting into us and it'll we'll go out. I will not do it. Always a happy guy. Where will we break down this time? I don't know, I've no, no idea. What exciting places could we break down? It didn't break down. It didn't break down. Not the second time around. It was still great. It was brilliant. So we're now about to go on to the, uh, the other ride. They always forget the forest in the grounds is forbidden to yeah. all students. Here we go. There's nothing that lives in the forest that will hurt you. Last time we were here, 
all of these fans were turned on because it was baking hot. It's, on <laughs> it's not time. baking hot today. If they turn on the fans, I will sue We did a POV on this one before, so if you want to see it, just check out our California Adventure 22 playlist and it's all on there. And just like yesterday, we're hungry again. We've not eaten yet because we wanted to get here and, and get on the rides ASAP as soon as the park opens. So as soon as we've been on this ride, we're going to hunt down some food and eat it. Yeah. Construction's taking place on Fast and the Furious. This is where the Fast and the Furious ride is going to be, over here. And then you can see down there is where all your Super Marios are. So over there is where all the sunshine is. <laughs> we just need it over here. There's the golf course. And the construction works taking place. Fast and the Furies. And there's the rest of the Bam Bam. Hi! Making our way to the lower lots where Transformers is and all the other rides as well. There's not much waiting time for those rides, so that's why we're going down there now. Jurassic World's still being tested, uh, but we're just going to grab some food. But let me just show you Super Nintendo World. There we go. That's the top view, Super Mario World. There's a huge series of these escalators which start from right at the top all the way down here and we've still got another two escalators to go. Escalator 14. <laughs> and there's Kung Fu Panda 4 which is already out in cinemas. And that's Jurassic World, which is inside there. We are now in the Transformers ride. We've not actually been here since when? 2019. And Kirsty thought, <laughs> what did you think? I was worried last time I came on this because I thought I was going to get a blood clot. <laughs> what? I was getting a pain in my car. And we were queuing. So we're looking forward to going on it. about to enter Super Nintendo World.
on the Super Mario Kart ride, but we're going to go single rider because uh, the queue, frankly, was absolutely massive. So, look at this. Top deck view. Fantastic. Jurassic ride right now. This is where this drop. The, the drop is huge and we never really end up getting wet but it's been raining all morning so it's gonna get wetter. A few minutes later. state of me. Drowned, burnt. Oh, it's starting to rain again. <laughs> that's what just, that's what we just endured. Holly just finished drying again. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Listen, make right. sure it's in focus. Holly, Holly had literally just finished literally wiping the glasses. I just did this. And I'm saying, Holly, are you serious, Holly? Dry. On the way, on the ride, I, I said, do it after. Before any drops. Well, the was a drop. She did of that. Water then one that drop came, from the came top down. And it just went boom. Just like in my eyeball everywhere. So then I dried it again. And then all of a sudden all this rain falls. That's as far as I got in Holly's eye apparently as well. Yeah. Oh, and another ride that we had. What was it? What was the other ride? We had two pairs of glasses on. Mario. And I, was it Mario? It wasn't Mario. Was it Transformers? Yeah, they got right in your eyes. No, it was the Harry Potter. No. It was not it was Transformers, it was, Holly. Oh, it was Transformers. Oh, yeah. And the water sprayed. And I had two pairs of glasses on. It still managed to get into my eyeball. <laughs> Dad's just drying off. <laughs> or the Tonight Show. We're welcome. welcome. The Universal Jimmy Studios Fallon. tour. Oh, hi there. Actually, on the, on the tour bus Welcome itself. To the Universal Studio tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon, I'm the greatest driver. Court. They're the best. I love it. Even though Court gives you a little behind the scenes look at the life of a stunt guy in a very uh, exaggerated way. But uh, a lot of the movies we're going to talk movie studio. Again, the largest working movie studio in Hollywood. So large that we are our very own city with our very own fire station. Fire station 51 on duty 24 seven, keeping us safe here in our little city, both in the theme park of Star Wagon. So behind this big white trailer and these two uh, black and white vans right here, if you look behind them, you'll see a lineup of about eight Star Wagons. This is where the actors will spend all their time when they are not inside of one of these. Soundstage 14 off to our left, being used for Bel Air right now, but another one of our historic stages. Uh, Apollo 13, filmed a little bit in here, directed by Ron Howard. This is Super Nolan, and Gary Oldman, and Killian Murphy in here filming for Oppenheimer. If you see in the movie, the Oval Office scene between Harry Truman and Oppenheimer took place entirely inside of here, building an exact recreation of the Oval Office. And right before that, we had season one of Ted, our newer Peacock original series starring this guy just off to our left-hand side, our very own family-friendly teddy bear. And as we say hello to him, here is Seth MacFarlane to take us behind the scenes of season one. Oh, let's try that again. Okay, one more time. If not, I'll just tell you about a lot of these television shows, but we got George Lopez's current sitcom all set up inside of these two sound stages. Of course, Lopez versus Lopez, where he stars alongside his daughter, Mayan Lopez. Brownstone Street. 
one of our more residential areas of our studio. It's been used in television shows and movies dating back to the 1960s. Give me one quick sec, folks. Let me check this out. Okay, give me one sec. All right, folks. Cool. Uh, I'm going to turn the tram off really quick. Square, though you may recognize this as Hill Valley from Back to the Future. Back to the Future hit theaters July 3rd, 1985. It starred Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. But you might notice that clock tower off to our left-hand side looks a little bit different than it did in 1985, as you see on your screens. Now, this is because after the massive success of Back to the Future, productions didn't want to film in here anymore because it had become too easily recognizable as Hill Valley. So we had to cover that clock tower up with a facade or a false front. That city hall structure you see right there appears to be made out of stone and brick. In reality, mostly plaster, fiberglass, wood, and plastic. If you look through those double doors, actually, you see a little piece of one of those columns. So the clock tower is all still there. We could even move it out of the way in a matter of hours if we wanted a more Hill Valley look. And now as we leave this legendary location behind, folks, time to head into the heart of our city sets. You already know it. This is New York Street. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. Once got mugged over there by an old woman, a tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Hey, it's cool, guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. Right. Before I get into some of the many productions that have filmed out here, uh, I just want to point out one quick thing. You look at each of these buildings, and they all look fairly different from the one next to it. Now, we do this intentionally, and I'll give you an example as to why we do this. An episode of How I Met Your Mother called Subway Wars. In this episode, the whole gang races from one side of Manhattan to the other, sees who can get there first. And they shot that entire episode right here on New York Street, creating all the locations of Manhattan they needed in this relatively small area. And the way they were able to do that is you can have Jason Siegel, let's say, standing on this side of the street with his phone, he's talking, looks like he's in one different part of New York, and then we can flip the camera around, have Allison Hannigan or Colby Smolder standing in front of this big glass building. To the viewer, it looks like they're in two different, entirely different parts of New York City, when in reality, we only used about 20 feet of our set. So they just did that building by building by building, putting each actor in front of a different location, uh, and able to get a lot of usage out of this relatively small area. Recently, we've had productions filmed back here like Quantum Leap, our time traveling continuation series in the hit 90s show. Uh, of course, it is a show about time traveling, so whenever they film back here, they create these incredible period accurate locations. Uh, in season one, they created a 1970s San Francisco back here for a big earthquake episode, so they built some uh, extra facades in front of these buildings, kind of destroyed those a little bit, had all this rubble laying in the street for that. Uh, and then last week, actually, we had Ryan Gosling out here filming some promo material for The Fall Guy. So we get usage out of these sets constantly. Twice a year, American Ninja Warrior will film on this street for their LA Trials and LA Finals. Uh, but there's, of course, a lot of reasons why productions like to use this fake city. And a big reason is the kind of stunt work we can do here on New York Street. I'll give you some uh, more modern examples, but check this scene out right here from the Blues Brothers, 1980s comedy classic starring Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Here's director John Landis talking about the exact stretch of road that we are on right now. When the... Oh, no. No, don't tell me. When the pit... Okay. Uh, I'm going to start this over one more time, folks. Looked like if a real person was swinging through a city environment. And then, of course, the VFX in that movie turned out wonderfully because they had this great reference video. Uh, now, uh, these sets, they'll undergo... Uh, plenty of changes pretty much every 10 to 15 years we used to have an above ground railway that ran right down the length of New York Street in fact you can see the railway here in this clip from Streets of Fire a movie from 1984 uh, but you'll also notice near the top of the frame here there's something on top of the buildings well Streets of Fire is a movie that takes place entirely at nighttime 
and entirely in a city location. So what they did is they covered our metro sets entirely in this black tarp, plunging it into darkness and giving these very convincing night sequences for the movie. So this shot right here filmed in the middle of the day with the sun in the sky outside, but able to uh, eliminate any of that sunlight from coming in. 22 years before that, an Oscar-winning movie. Paul Newman and Hitchcock's Torn Curtain. Nice place, huh? There's Elvis Presley back in 1969. And then check this out. So Robert Redford in The Sting, but ready? Jim Carrey, again in Bruce Almighty, running through New York Street and winding up in... Courthouse Square with the original clock tower from Back in the Future revealed for that one. So a lot of the times when these universal movies are filming in a big city, pay close attention because most likely it is right here on New York Street. But folks, we are just... But even after these monster movies faded away, productions continued to film in here. This is the mythical town of Genovia, Princess Diaries 2, which starred Anne Hathaway and Julie Andrews. This was used in Roger and Hammerstein's Cinderella, starring Brandy and the late great Whitney Houston. It was used frequently throughout the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, but more recently, we transformed this place into the good place. The do Eleanor Shellstrom are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. Hi there. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. All four seasons of The Good Place streaming now on Peacock. But as we leave Little Europe behind, I want to return just briefly to those monster movies because they ended up being some of the most important movies of all time, inspiring modern day classics like John Carpenter's The Thing, uh, Jordan Peele's Nope, but there is another modern day monster movie that kind of stands above the rest, and that is the 1975 summer smash hit, Jaws, a movie that we are about to talk a lot more about. So before we do, here is the man behind the film, Steven Spielberg, to Whoa. talk about that. I've never seen a shark stay still before. That's so strange. Uh, hey, George. George, can you come up out of the water, please? Hello? George, yeah. Uh, do you see a shark staring at you? Will you go back under? It just went under. He, oh, I can't hear him. Can you guys... Uh-oh. Oh, that's... Okay. Well, I'm sure he's going to find a way out of this. No? Oh. That's awful. Okay. I'm very sorry, everybody. Um... We do luckily have a backup plan, this yellow barrel out here in the harbor. With any luck, the shark is going to chop down on the bait, get caught, and our worries will be over. Let's see if he goes for it. It looks like he's circling it. Uh-oh. Oh no, he's, he's ripped the pier out of its foundation. Gasoline now spraying everywhere. Folks, hold on. mechanical shark here on the lot. We named him Bruce after Spielberg's mechanical shark, though ours does work quite a bit better than his did during the making of Jaws. That's a line oh, shark. The shark was frustrating. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio mics. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited. It was actually first built inside of a sound stage, and it was constructed like a doll's house. It had hinges on the side. It was able to be opened up in the middle like you can with a doll's house to get interior filming done a bit easier. And it was all made for this Dolly Parton, Burt Reynolds movie musical, Candy Cane Lane. If you see the movie, uh, this is the titular Candy Cane Lane, decked out with some incredible decorations for the movie. And as we head out of here, we'll turn to your screens. You'll first see Tom Hanks in The Burbs, Christina Ricci in Casper, Phil in Nellyville out here, and a whole lot more. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. 
when we first began to sit down to talk about the war of the world, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep your eyes on me. That's my comment. Listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Got them closed? Mommy. Robbie, get in. Get in. But now, folks, as we get one last look at that plane crash set, we're going to be moving from one spectacular set piece to another as we get ready to head through Jupiter's claim. And who better to walk us through Jupiter's claim than Academy Award winning uh, filmmaker in the multi talented Jordan Peele? Movie magic only happened. This is Jupiter's claim. A nostalgic, small-time, Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie kid show. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Well, I do. A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience, built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. Oh, it's not looking so live. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of an old rush frontier town lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center of the UFO hotspot. Welcome to the world of no. take his advice and get out of here but if you'd like an answer to that mystery be sure to check out Nope streaming now digitally you can also find it on blu-ray but folks we've talked a lot about movies on our tour today so i think it's only appropriate we just ordered a crusty burger for ben because he's always wanted a crusty burger haven't you ben well we'll see now like, i wonder what it tastes like so. and as you can tell the sun is out and i'm getting even more redder okay, gorgeous lovely so I'm just waiting to pick it up. We just ordered it on the app. Uh, just been on the Simpsons ride again. Uh, we've not been on it since 2019. It was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. In fact, I've been really, really pleased with all the rides we've been on. Um, I think the studio tour is just amazing. And they've really ramped up the rides within the studio tour. So you go on the King Kong ride whilst you're on the, the tour bus and also on the Fast and Furious ride as well. Um, they are designing a Fast and Furious roller coaster, which is just here, but that's not gonna be ready until at least next year, uh, mid part of next year, uh, so they say, but everything else is, is all fantastic. So we've had a great time. We've managed to do absolutely everything that we wanted to do in the short space of time. I wanted to go on the mummy, but no one else wanted to wait. So that's just one thing. Yeah, well, no one wants to wait. Look, listen, last time I went on it, I banged my head and it really hurt for the rest of the day. I went, it was, because it went backwards. If it didn't go backwards, it'll be fine, I'll go on it. But it went, and it smacked my head in. Subtitles, page 888. Well, we've ridden all we can today because this is our final ride and we're going back on the Harry Potter ride because we really? love it so much. We've been on everything else. Uh, I've even had a duff beer. I don't mean a Duff beer, but one from The Simpsons. Duff beer! I've even had a Long Island iced tea, only because I wanted a fancy wine, but really have Chardonnay, but really fancy wine. Chardonnay was $14, and the, and the um, cocktail was $16. But then he said, that's 17 <laughs> <laughs> Then he said, that's $17.50. I went, it says 16 Yeah, plus tax. So, well, I mean, the wine would be... Everything's plus tax. The wine would be more, so anyway, it was quite strong. We I mean, could have shared it. You had the majority there because it was your drink. Well, the ice can't pour it down. And I need a wee. But anyway, we'll go on this first. Yeah. Let's open it right now. 
but we'll see you on the other side. Fred Barney's Beanery, I've just sung on Third Street with Sing On Street, which is fantastic. See, it's me that you adore And the darling tell me where We just order our food and the food is just right here. 